A human resources department exists in order to protect the corporation from its workers. The HR department is one of the most dangerous departments in any corporation. Now, if you're working at a corporation, you have to know how to handle an HR department. And handling an HR department depends on, first of all, understanding what a human resources department is about in a corporation. Now, a lot of guys think that a uh, human resources department is there to smooth things between the workers and the corporation. Now, this is, of course, bullshit. Yeah. You see, I never really understood what a human resources department was until I set up my own corporation and wound up having to set up my own human resources department. And then I learned. You know that thing that you, know, you learn algebra or calculus, say, and you sort of like have a semi good handle on it, but then you wind up at some point having to teach it. And by being on the other side of the table, you understand it a whole lot better. Okay, same thing happened to me insofar as HR. Uh, a human resources department, you have to understand its functionality, what it's there for, all right? A human resources department exists in order to protect the corporation from its workers. You understand? You see, from a corporate point of view, workers are liabilities. They are liabilities in the sense that, first of all, you have to pay them. Yeah, you have to give them benefits. You have to potentially give them some sort of training. And if something happens, potentially these employees can wind up suing you, suing you for a lot of money. Okay, lots of times, not because what the corporation did was bad, but because somebody else who worked for the corporation did something that was bad. The Human Resources Department has the primary function of protecting the corporation from the workers. And it fulfills this mission by doing essentially one of two things. On the one hand, it helps workers and to keep them happy. Okay. It does different things so that workers are enjoying their work environment, on the one hand. On the other hand, the human resources has a whip that it can wield on the worker to keep that worker in line. You see? Carrot and the stick. Everything is like that. Carrot and the stick, human resources departments wield both. It doesn't matter if it's a private corporation or if it's the government or the military or anything. Every company or every group enterprise will have eventually a human resources department. And its function is to protect itself from the workers, from the people in it, not to help them. Helping them is just a side effect of carrying out its mission to protect the corporation from the workers. Never forget that, okay? Now, the first step in understanding a human resources department is to understand who works at a human resources department. And that's exceedingly easy. Most of the time, the people who gravitate to human resources aren't very capable. They're just not very competent. They're not very competent in general, but they love to gossip. They are the kind of people that you knew in high school. You know those people, girls, who would be like smoking a cigarette, you know, and gossiping. Gossip, gossip, gossip. I mean, they sounded like geese on the schoolyard playground, right? Talking about this, starting drama. They were drama queens. That's what they were, okay? Those people gravitate to human resources departments. Now, human resource departments, it's easy to advance in a human resources department because the quality of the people is so low. If you're an okay engineer, you're not gonna get far. If you're an okay sales guy, you're not gonna get far. If you're an okay production manager, if you're an okay operations guy, if you're an okay finance guy, you're gonna be middle of the pack. You're never gonna really advance. But if you're middle of the road, insofar as human resources is concerned, you're gonna rise because the people are so bad in general. Although there are luminaries and those people get to the C-suite, okay? But that's for another story. Now, what do these people do in order to protect the corporation? They are constantly like monitoring what the people do because you see in a very real sense, see, when a company has a machine on the factory floor, there's a technician who comes to do maintenance to that machine. The technician comes every three months or six months or whenever, and you know, greases, puts a little grease here and changes the ball bearings over there and tightens this little nut and unscrews this little screw and what have you and voila, the machine is good to go for another three, six months. 
but people are far less predictable. Okay? They are far less predictable. On the contrary, they're completely unpredictable from the point of view of a corporation, yet a corporation needs them. So what does a corporation do? It pays the human resources department to monitor the workers. That's the other function that it is fulfilling. Protect the corporation and monitor the workers. Now you have to keep in mind, any communication that you have via corporate email, via the corporate phone, you have to automatically assume that all records are going to human resources, okay? by definition. And it's very easy, of course. I mean, if you know anything of IT, it's very, very simple to have the IT forward all of somebody's emails and, and have a log of all of their call and have that go straight to the HR department. In point of fact, large corporations do that all the time. They don't make a big fuss about it, but they do it. You do not have privacy, you see, when you were working for a corporation, right? So the problem becomes, of course, you are working for a big corporation. How do you handle HR? Should you handle HR? Well, of course, because an HR department can be exceedingly dangerous to you, but it can also help you, help you very much, okay? Help you in your corporate climb. Like I said, I don't have any experience in a, in a corporation. I never worked at a corporation. Let me phrase that. I never worked for a corporation. Ever since I graduated from college, the first few jobs I had were just uh, office temp work, that kind of thing, just to, just to pay the rent, as it were. And then I, I was doing freelance stuff, and when that took off, I never looked back. And uh, when I set up uh, some companies and what have you, well, I was leading it. You know, I didn't work for the company in a very real sense. The company was working for me, yeah? And I was doing everything possible to make this company succeed, but you know. And that's how I wound up uh, hiring an h and person who was very capable, very good, a woman, of course. A lot of people think that HR departments are full of feminists. That's semi-true. At the end of the day, their loyalty is to the corporation, not to feminists, not to any kind of ideology, because the people who go to human resource departments, they tend to be people who bow and scrape to authority, right? But they enjoy lording it over the people that they consider below them or that they have some power over. Now, if you say that to me that, oh, well, you're basically describing bullies, that's right, that's what they are, they're bullies. Human resources attracts not very capable people who are temperamentally bullies, okay? Now, they hide the, the fact that there are bullies under a facade because they, Understand that to lord it over somebody, it's not always just cracking the whip. You can also be smiling and generous and, and helpful, okay? And be, you know, sort of like a source of plenty for the worker, okay? They enjoy that. They enjoy lording it over the worker both by cracking the whip and by waving a carrot around, okay? And they're like that. They're that kind of people. They're kind of awful, okay? I personally don't like human resources people because I've had enough experience with them of, of hiring them and them working for me that I didn't like them, I didn't trust them. You're never gonna trust them. They work for you and they're gonna bow and scrape. But the problem is that in my own case, temperamentally, I've never really liked people who bow and scrape to me. I think that they're hiding something or trying to fuck me over somehow. And, and you know, but that's another story. The way you handle human resources people. You arrive at a corporation and you are probably going to be exposed to human resources people on your very first day on the job, on your new job, wheresoever it may be, no matter how lowly your position or how elevated your position, right? They're gonna be the first people because you arrive at the office and you have to sign your uh, employment contract or whatever. And they, you have to fill out forms that they're gonna need for different things, medical, taxes, what have you. So you're gonna meet them. So this is what you do to handle an HR department. You meet your contact person at h &R and you ask about a little bit about the department and ask them. And people love to talk about themselves. So naturally, they're gonna tell them you all about the HR department and who's who and what's what. Keep in mind also, these are very gregarious people by nature. So it, it's not gonna be a, a difficult thing to get them to tell you all about the HR department. They like doing this, they like the drama. It's, their, it's built into their personality, that's why they're in HR, right? Now, you quickly find out who's the big kahuna in the HR department, okay? This woman, that woman, this guy, that guy, it's usually women, okay? Now, you find out who's the big kahuna and you find out who's the contact person and you make friends with them, okay? Or let me phrase it, 
you're friendly with them. You drop by their offices once every three, four weeks on some excuse, but just to touch base with them. And whenever you talk to the people at Human Resources, you always say that everything is wonderful. Everything is wonderful and you're so happy and you feel so fulfilled and you have a great boss and great coworkers and great uh, subordinates and everything is perfect. That's what they want to hear. If you tell Human Resources people that you're having a problem, however minor you think it might be, it becomes a problem for them. They have to handle it. They don't want to handle it. Nobody wants to do more work. So you never have a problem whenever you're talking to an H&R person. You might hate your boss and you're, you're pulling each other's hair out. I mean, you might have all kinds of problems, but when you talk to H&R, everything is hunky-dory always. Okay? Now, the other thing that you do with the human resources, apart from saying that you're such a happy employee, which is they always like, you tell them how your department is going. You give them little tidbits. You know, how, how your peers are doing, right? How your boss or the boss diagonal to you is doing, if they're doing okay or they're very happy, below you as well. Below, directly below you and to your sides. You tell H&R how things are going. Now, you're gonna say to yourself, well, you know, you want me to basically be a snitch. Well, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, you're gonna have to be a snitch. You're gonna have to be a quisling. Okay, and it's distasteful, but it's part of, you know, dealing with a corporation as an employee, as it were. See, you're going to have to be a little bit of an informant and tell them how things are going. Okay, they'll appreciate it. Human resources will appreciate it very much. And it's important because human resources has a disproportionate influence on people's advancement, especially within a large corporation. You see, if you're working for the sake of argument, an investment bank, on their prop trading desk, right? Proprietary trading, right? At the end of the day, nobody cares about your problems or who you are. H&R goes out the window because at a prop desk, as a trader on the investment bank's prop desk, all that matters is, are you making money or not? If you're making money, you could be, you know, Hitler and Stalin and uh, the, the Tasmanian devil all rolled up into one and they'll put up with you happily. And human resources will do whatever you want, okay? And, and, you know, anything if you're making money for a bank. You could be the sweetest guy in the world, just Jesus Christ himself. And if you're making, if you're losing money for a bank and the prop trading is, they're going to fire you. So in those situations where your performance dictates your career advancement, it doesn't matter. It's when you're in that softer area, like, for instance, if you're in marketing or if you're in production and part of a team, Okay, that's when it matters a lot more. That's when human resources and them knowing you matters and can influence your position. Like I said, if you're in some job where there's an absolute scorecard, human resources means nothing. But most jobs are not like that. Most jobs are sort of like soft in terms of their evaluation. It's hard to discern if one employee is better than another employee. So you wanna get H&R on your side. Now, you get them by saying that everything's always hunky-dory. You get them on your side by telling them how your department is doing, the different people in your department, okay? When you drop by their offices, the H&R offices, you know, every three, four weeks, you say, oh yeah, we're doing this project, it's really great, everybody's really happy, and somebody's not happy, you sort of mention it, but no names, right? Because if you mention somebody's name to HR, the HR's microscope is gonna fall on that person. And we're gonna get to that in just a second. So you always sort of like give them a little bit of a background of how things are going so that, so that, it's very simple, so that when the time comes, you can pull in favors with H&R and they have a lot of pull and they're gonna want you to advance if you're helping them. If you help them do their job, they will help you advance. It's a reality of it. I've talked to with a bunch of people I know somebody very close to me who actually is in HR and they are exceptionally confident, uh, competent and they gave me a lot of this info that I'm giving you, okay? In, in a big corporation and they knew what they were doing. See, the human resources department, see, they're sort of blind to what's going on in the corporation because everybody knows who they are. They're sort of like, uh, you know, internal affairs at, at the police station. Nobody really wants to tell them anything. And yet at the same time, it's important for them to know what's going on within the corporation to know what's going on within, among the employees. So they value people who give them a little breakdown. They value them, okay? And you can be forthright with them. You can, you can don't, don't pretend that you don't know what you're doing. They'll appreciate it more. It'll be more straightforward and easier for both of you, okay? You're negotiating. 
You give them tidbits, they help you out. Now, if somebody's causing a problem, you mention it to H&R. Now, here's the issue with H&R. H&R can help you because a lot of times, it's not your boss who's gonna determine whether you go up in a corporation. It's going to be your evaluation and HR, okay? And so they, therefore, if you have a boss who has his foot on your shoulder and is not letting you advance, and there are gonna be a lot of bosses that you're gonna have that, like that, by the way. You see, if you're capable at your job, a not so capable boss will want to keep you where you are and not have you advance. Because if you advance, he has to find somebody to replace you. He doesn't want that. Okay, so he's gonna to try to keep you there, his foot on your shoulder, firmly on your shoulder, see? And sometimes the only escape is to go work someplace else. And by going to work someplace else, you lose all that social capital that you will have built up in the corporation that you were working at, okay? So changing jobs, changing companies, especially if they're big companies, is not a good thing because you're losing all that social capital, okay? So you only change jobs when you have a great offer and the money, the more money that they're offering you or the more benefits or whatever is, worse, is worth losing all that social capital. But if your boss is keeping his foot on your shoulder, right? H&R can help you get around that boss, see? Because you tell them, see? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being honest, see? A lot of people think that, you know, if you're being all Machiavellian, you have to be like really quiet and discreet and everything. No, no, no. You can go up to uh, H&R and say, yeah, you know, I'm doing my job. I'm doing it real well. But, you know, the problem is I'm having, I hate to say it, but see, I can do the higher level job, but John or whomever keeps his foot on my shoulder. They can help you out. Because like I said, a lot of career advancements within a corporation depends on the H&R evaluating you. Okay. And if you're friends with them, they'll help you out. Okay. Now, you want to fuck somebody over? Here's how you do it. Because H&R is the ultimate weapon to fuck people over in a corporate environment. And it's exceedingly easy to do that because, because of feminism. Feminism has created such a rot environment between men and women that practically anything can be used against a man and used as you know creating a hostile work environment. Because that's the watchword with H&R departments today, the hostile work environment where you are sexually harassed or whatever. And you see, what happens is that, for instance, say John is harassing Mary at Corporation X, see? Well, what's going to happen to John? At best, he's going to get fired, at best. But what will Mary do? She might sue the company, see? So in a very real sense, the company had nothing to do with John being a dick and sexually harassing Mary, but Mary sues the company and the company is liable. See, that's what H&R does. They protect against that exact liability. The second they hear a whiff that anybody is sexually harassing anybody else, automatically the company is on the hook because they know about it, okay? And so what happens is the company via HR is going to make sure to eliminate that threat as quickly as possible. And that's where you get all Machiavellian. Well, it's not real Machiavellianism. You know, it's, it's like if, if Machiavellianism is, you know, between step one is stealing a pack of chewing gum from the supermarket and step 10, you know, like um, uh, founding your own religion, like uh, L. Ron Hubbard did, well, then I guess that this is step three or four on that, you know, step ladder of Machiavellianism. You see, this is what you do when you want to fuck over somebody, um, say a boss or a coworker or anybody, okay? At some point, you all with your team, with the people, people you work with, you're going to go and hang out at somebody's house or maybe get a drink at the bar or something like that. And somebody, the target, let's call him John, the guy you don't like, the guy who's maybe he has his foot on your shoulder, maybe he's a dickhead, maybe he's taking credit for your work, maybe you just, you personally are an asshole and just want to fuck somebody over. Well, this is how you do it. You see, John at work is all very, you know, respect, uh, respectful of everybody else. But you know, when you're hanging out with friends, you're having a drink and you say silly things, especially with women. And when you're having a drink, you wind up being a little bit more flirty. Say, for the sake of argument, that John and you know, the whole crowd from work are hanging out, you know, having a barbecue. And um, you wind up talking about whatever, and you know, John says something 
a little bit vulgar. I, I can't imagine something at this point offhand, but like just say, oh, he just says, oh, you know, Mary has great tits. Okay. So what you do is you go to HR and say, you know, John said that Mary had great tits. And I think that that was kind of, I don't want to sound like a snitch, but I thought it was just inappropriate. Okay. You don't mention the fact that it was at somebody's barbecue. You don't mention the fact that Mary didn't hear it even. You know, you just say that, you know, this is what he said. And, and what's key, of course, you say, I wasn't the only one who heard it. Uh, Stanley and Joe and Tom and Brad, they all heard John say that Mary had great tits. Okay. So you have automatically, it's not a he said, she said, it's he said and three, four other witnesses, you know, and maybe they all agreed that Mary has great tits. Who knows? Who cares? The point is, see, automatically, this is what H&R is going to do. They're going to put a microscope on John without John knowing about it, of course, right? They're going to watch his emails. They're going to read all of them. They're going to monitor his calls, you know, because they're not going to be able perhaps to hear what the actual call is saying, although that technology is on its way, by the way, but they're going to know whom he called and they're going to have a list of, of those numbers that he called, right? And what they're going to do is that they are going to confidentially call up everybody who was at that barbecue, you know, Tom and Stanley and all that, uh, all the people that you say that you claim, of course, heard John say that Mary had great tits and they're all going to be scared shitless. Okay. Because it's scary when HR calls you. It's one thing when you drop by because you have an issue. It's another thing when you drop by just for the fun of it, just to shits and giggles of it. It's quite another when human resources call you because most people assume that when human resources is calling you, they're going to fire you. So they show up at human resources because that's what human resources is going to do. And they're going to ask him, did John call Mary sugar tits or you had great tits or whatever? They're going to say, yeah, so, okay, we just want to confirm that. And they're going to send them on the way because that way they, they don't care the context. They just care that this happened. Okay. They're going to watch John and keep him under a microscope for six months, a year, maybe. If he deviates even a little bit, he's gone. Why? Because of Mary. Because the H&R department, the corporation is going to make the calculation that a uh, firing somebody and giving him a severance package is cheaper than paying off Mary's lawsuit against the company for a hostile work environment. Now you're going to say that this doesn't happen. I fired a guy because of this, because the H&R came and said, you know, this guy, you know, he says like unpleasant things about women, uh, not to their faces, but he says it enough that it's going to cause problems. And the calculation was made by the finance guy and human resources. And it was just cheaper to fire the guy and give him his full severance package, just fire him and get rid of him than to deal with this potential threat to the company. It happens all the time. And I, I signed off on it. So I know whereof I speak. It was just a strict financial decision. Now, the problem of course, is that nowadays, okay, Nowadays, and the reason you want to pay attention to human resources and the reason you want to do all this shit of making nice with them and all the rest of it, which is no question morally distasteful, but the reality is that today there are more people looking for work than are jobs available. That's a fact of life. Okay. And so the problem is that, see, if you get fired from a job today, your career is over. Okay. It's not that you're going to have to rebound and, you know, adjust or whatever, or maybe even take a, a, a pay cut or step down in terms of responsibility. No, no, no. If you get fired today in corporate America or corporate Europe, for that matter, your career is over. If you are downsized, okay, if you are let go by a company because they're downsizing, but the company does not go broke, Automatically, people assume, ah, they cut the fat and you were the fat. And so they're not going to pay that much attention to you. See, getting fired, getting laid off in corporate America or corporate Europe today is the worst thing that can happen to you. Okay. So you have to understand when you go and do something like this, you are doing something really immoral. Now, I would never recommend you do this unless, you know, it's a, it's a him or me kind of situation. And then of course, if it's a him or me kind of situation, it doesn't matter who's in the right or in the wrong. It's survival of the fittest baby. That's the reality of today. 
Human resources is a key part of corporate culture. It is a key player. In many ways, it is the most important player because our social interactions are so dangerous nowadays because of feminism, because of leftoidism, you know, cultural Marxism, call it what you will. But today, you're walking on eggshells. No, sorry, you're not walking on fucking eggshells. You're walking on, on, uh, across a, a, a mind field, okay? One wrong step and you're gonna get blown up, okay? So, so what do you do? You make sure it's the other guy who blows up, not you, yeah? And if you have to be an immoral bastard, if you have to manipulate human resources to protect your own career and fuck over anybody who's in your way, you see, on a moral level, and when I was younger, I would say, no, 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 you can't do that, period. You can never do that. But the fact of the matter is, as I get older and become more pragmatic or cynical, depending on your point of view, you got to look after yourself because nobody else is looking after you. It's a hard fact of life. And human resources, they're not looking after you. So you are either helping them or you're the enemy. Make sure that you're not the enemy. this video and please check out the other videos I have on this channel and if you like them please subscribe thanks very much